Value-based healthcare is not a foreign topic, but one that does require some level of clarity and some level of common uh, thinking uh, framework. Uh, around it to, to make sure that uh, we can make progress towards that end. Let me start first with this topic of value-based health care. I'll start with a perspective that we've built uh, at uh, Medtronic, but really it's a perspective that everyone has. It's common to everyone, and we've simply uh, put some words and language together uh, to unify the thoughts. And these are the three needs that we think uh, are common in healthcare, needs that are probably enduring over time, and needs that uh, anyone in healthcare, anywhere in the world, whatever their own position is or w whatever kind of stakeholder they are, uh, they will gravitate and try to fulfill one or more of these three, what we call universal healthcare needs. The first is, uh, is very important to recognize because that forms a backdrop for healthcare, that we collectively have a quest to improve clinical outcomes. In other words, make our health better. Uh, this is nothing new. This we've had forever, for centuries and millennia. People have wanted to live longer, get better from illnesses quicker, and be inventive about how we do those things. Uh, we just must never forget that this is essentially the essence of healthcare. It's also the essence of how our company was formed in the collaboration between an engineer and a physician uh, to create uh, use technology to change outcomes. So th that always remains at the center of our thought process. That, however, is not enough. There are other problems in healthcare. The second one that's uh, equally uh, compelling and important, and, and in many ways uh, people um, don't look at it in that way, is, is the fact that there is inequity in, uh, in access to healthcare around the world, which is something that um, you know, we all uh, should take responsibility for and shouldn't really you know, tolerate. Just in Canada itself, there's a difference in access uh, between different populations, not only in different regions, but even within cities. Uh, and this is not always a, a matter of affordability. There are situations where um, people can afford the health care, the government pays for health care, and yet access is not the same. You know, I tell a story that in the city of London, in England, you go from um, the west of London to the east of London, and there are about seven or eight uh, subway stations uh, or tube stations, and in every one of those, you lose a, a year of ex expected lifespan. And here's a country where uh, everything's supposed to be paid for, and you've got equal access, and there are hospitals. It's not a, you know, it's not some kind of emerging market. And that's because there is an inequity in healthcare. Now, of course, if you expand this problem uh, globally and you look at underserved populations around the world, you know, the problem kind of magnifies uh, by orders of magnitude. So, again, our ability to equalize access is not a trivial problem and one that we shouldn't take lightly. However, the third issue is that even in that context, our ability to improve clinical outcomes and new ways to provide access, we find that what we do is not efficiently delivered. There's wastage in the system. And that is what we mean by optimized cost and efficiencies. And, and although I put that third on the list, it actually is rapidly becoming a constraint, an eventual constraint in our financials to do the first two. Because if you continue to improve clinical outcomes at a pace that's fairly rapid, and you find ways to drive access, but we're inefficient in the way we do this, at some point, the cost burden will become prohibitive. In developed markets, in developed countries uh, such as Canada, and certainly in the United States, it's becoming more and more important. And it's a big subject of discussion, as I'm sure you're all aware of, and people make different trade-offs. You know, in some countries, because of the cost burden, they trade that off with waiting times, which is essentially access. In other countries, they simply spend them more money and kind of complain about it, but spend more money. Uh, and, and so there's different ways in which, uh, you know, the pressure is, is sort of relieved, but those methods of uh, pressure relief are certainly not sustainable. And one has to do something about it. You know, just increasing waiting times is not a sustainable answer, nor is an uh, arbitrary and continuous increase in cost, because it takes away from other things, and at some time, at some point, that'll uh, stop. The point is that this is all avoidable because it is, in, in effect, inefficiencies and wastage. And if we get more granular about it and pay more attention to it, we can probably uh, use our funds more effectively. And more importantly, we feel that at some point in the future, if value-based healthcare is really achieved, healthcare costs will actually go down because better outcomes, which drives better quality of life, and less expensive hospital visits will in fact lower the cost of healthcare. We can funnel that money to improve access and do all kinds of other things, improve prevention. So 
that topic, the topic number three, which I've stated at the end because that's a result of the other two, but it's soon becoming a constraint to drive things that we really want. But the point is that there needs to be a level of leadership around this. We feel that because our role as a company is to use technology to change outcomes, if this problem is not addressed, our ability, our long-term sustainability, believe it or not, even as a company, to drive clinical outcomes is hampered. It's, it's hampered for all of healthcare, but certainly we're in the middle of that. And so it's important for us not to sit around and wait for something to happen, but to try to contribute and lead if necessary. So what I'm going to talk to you today is really a proposal for healthcare. It's something that we want to put out as a discussion point and demonstrate that we're willing to invest in that area, to take risk in that area, to drive business models in that area, and drive our company uh, towards value-based healthcare. Uh, if the system evolves by itself, we can take a secondary position in that. If it doesn't, we'll take a primary position in that. But it's extremely important to not sit around but instigate and, and start a dialogue, a real uh, action-oriented dialogue in this topic. And that's really the backdrop of what I will share with you today.